Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing? Oh, it's so early this morning. I've been up for a while. The sun is starting to kind of decide whether or not it wants to come up. <laughs> I sometimes wonder. Anyway. I'm a little spacey this morning. It was really hard to get up this morning. I have a very, very busy day and I'm exhausted today. I don't know why. I, I went to bed at the same time and I just had a really hard time waking up this morning. Sometimes that happens, right? Like everything's good. And then it's not easy. <laughs> like, what is that? Okay, so we're going to start with Celtic devotional. Son of the twilight, daughter of dreams, uncreated child of the universe, my heart plays with you. Spring song broken, heart's token, candle message softly spoken, leaves unfurling light before, open now the soul's door. I like that. As spring awakens all energy, energies from dormancy. So I call upon my soul's teacher to show me how this day has led me out of isolation. May the passion of awakening life be granted to all who journey through the realms of spring. Through the long hours of this day, I have longed to be with you. Bring with me now to the depths of your refreshing love. From the potent source of stillness, I arise to meditate on the moonlight message of your story. I give thanks for the gift of spiritual awareness. Those who have helped me on my path, may the lovely light of inner illumination shine upon all pathways and the seekers who walk with them. I remember all who are intolerant and full of prejudice. May the fear that is triggered by the threat of differentness ways recede as the waters of love and mutual respect rise higher in the planet's prayers. May all who legislate and decide my country's laws and affairs be gifted with forbearance and foresight, not to mar the future. I give thanks for the powers of the planets as they encircle me this day. May their embracing guidance be understood as a token of the universal dance. Love that. There's a little picture on this one. I guess I'd never noticed. It's, it's a really cool little tiny picture. Can you see that? It's they're playing chess. Checkers or chess, maybe? I totally have never seen that image before. I've had this book for decades. I never noticed what was that in that picture. It looks like a man. Well, it looks like two men playing checkers. Or chess. I don't know. It's pretty cool. The things you notice. Okay, today's card. Freedom from judgment. Free to love. Freedom from judgment. Free to love. The downside to these cards is they're glossy. And so I have to hold them in a certain way or all you get is glare. Actually, that's pretty good. I guess the closer doesn't work as well. That's pretty cool. Okay. Imagine a world so infused with bliss and love and wonder that you naturally and always feel safe as nourished as a nourished, cherished baby in the arms of the universal mother. I love that idea. We are infused with bliss. Mm, I love that. Life mothers us with kindness and sometimes when we need it to grow through challenge as well. Accepting this mothering in its gentle and fierce faces can be difficult at times. Yet there are those brave enough to spirit in spirit to go forth into their life path with absolute trust in universal mother. Some are even part of her plan to help mothers other help mother others so that they too can surrender fear and live more freely. Hmm. 
You are learning about mothering and being mothered. You might not do this in a typical way. It might be through bearing children, but it can also be through adopting, raising children, or otherwise taking care of children and loving them as if they were your own. You might be learning how to mother on a rather different scale through groups, community, causes, and purpose, through your devotion, your energy, your belief, and your values. Your willingness to be wild is or a supportive shoulder to lean upon in order to bring those worthwhile groups to life. You may also be an aspect of universal mother on a spiritual level. Some people do that, do this are male, some are female, some have children and some do not. Some are healers and some work with seemingly more ordinary professions. They have a mothering aspect in common and they love and respect life. They believe in life. They are moved by compassion and are genuinely encouraged and respected by people. Rather than taking perverse delight when someone stumbles, they want to help. They are ordinary people with extraordinary natural tendency to nurture life around them. This brings you, this oracle brings you confirmation that you are amongst the Universal Mother's special clan of nurturing spirits to help and honor life on this planet. You are being asked to open and receive more nurturing. You can do this for yourself and you can choose to open up and allow others to nurture you. It may take a while and you may feel, feel vulnerable at first, especially if you're not used to doing this, but you don't have to worry. You will get used to valuing, your, valuing yourself enough to know that needing love and affection from another is an opportunity, not only for you to receive, but for someone else to give, which involves them being able to receive too. If you have been asking for a solution to a specific difficulty you've been having, this oracle comes with a message that a solution is in gestation. The situation is already being sorted out and resolution will come to fruition very soon. Hold tight and wait for the imminent birth of that resolution. Like that. This is also a confirmation that you are, if you are interested in working with children, your inner child for emotional healing or any sort of uninhibited creative process that helps dislodge social conditioning and open up one to more spontaneous feeling-based existence, then yes, Please go ahead and do that. <laughs> the universal mother is supporting you and you cannot have a more powerful ally. So she wrote a prayer in this one. I now release from my body, mind, and heart any negative mothering experiences that would prevent me from receiving and healing grace, the healing grace and love and support of the universal mother through natural flow of life. It's a really long sentence. I'm going to try that again. I now release from my body, mind, and heart any negative mothering experiences that would prevent me from receiving the healing grace, love, and support of the universal mother through the natural flow of life. May I be blessed and held in her loving embrace so that I may grow into all that I am. So blessed be. Oh, breathe that one in and out. Isn't that beautiful? I think that there's a I've been having some really interesting conversations with people recently about mothering and nurturing and those kind of things. And I didn't really have a mother who nurtured. She didn't, she didn't know how she did not know how. Um, and grandma really didn't know how either. I mean, she left home at 13 married and had kids by the time she was 16. She didn't know what she was doing. And so the mother experience in our family, in my biological mother's family, was very broken. And I didn't necessarily do great either. But one of the things that I did do when my children were small is I went back to college because Okay, now I got to go. Now I have to finish college, right? And I took pretty much all the early childhood education classes that I could get my hands on. Not because I wanted to specialize in that. I did not. Um, but because I kind of wanted to know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> and that's the thing. 
I made mistakes. I wasn't the perfect mom. I don't think there was any such thing as the perfect mom. But I was able to use my knowledge and it helped store, restore and, and bolster my wanting and willingness to repair and not be the parent that, because we usually become our parents when we have kids because that's what we know. We parent how we were parented. And I knew that that wasn't right. I knew that my mother's parenting was not the correct way to do it. And my father did a better job, but he wasn't there all the time. He was in the military. So I conscientiously parented both of my boys differently. Um, I didn't do a great job of it necessarily all of the time, but I did the best that I could with the tools that I had. And both of my children, I had, you know, until they were five years old, they had me as consistently as you can have somebody who is a single mom and working and doing the best that she can. Did I make mistakes? hundred percent. Did I say and do things I probably shouldn't have as a mom? Absolutely. Um, but I did a pretty good job and I look at this card and I look at the meaning of what it means to be nourished and nurtured by Universal Mother. And that very first spot that I read, I truly believe that I, I, I want to live with this, that Imagine a world infused with bliss, love, and wonder that you naturally and always feel safe as a nourished, cherished baby in the arms of the Universal Mother. There are those brave enough in spirit to go forth in their path of life with absolute trust in the Universal Mother. I truly do trust the universe to nurture, to replenish, to nourish me, and that anything that comes my way is exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's the journey and it's the lesson that I'm supposed to be having at that time. Does it mean it's easy? No, but I truly trust it. I trust that energy. And when you raise children, one of the things that I've said for years, years and years and years, and I started saying this when Thor was really, really small, my oldest son, Thor, and I would say it to Taliesin all the time, you know, boys, that I'm only a mom for a little while. And a lot less time than most parents think of being parents. You're only a parent for a little while. When your child is tiny, really tiny, their brains are growing at an exponentially fast rate. Every moment of every day is important. And I miss some of that time because I was overwhelmed and I had autism and ADHD undiagnosed. And there were times that I got overwhelmed and I was not a good mom. I did not parent well sometimes, but when I could be a hundred percent present, I was a hundred percent present. And you're only a parent for a little while in the sense that until you're, until they're about five, six years old, it kind of depends on, cognitively and brain science, and there's all sorts of actual science in this statement. But until that point, their brains are just sucking it up and soaking it in and learning everything. They're watching you. Everything that you're doing, they're watching that. And they're soaking all of that in. And there's a shift. There's a cognitive shift. And when that shift happens, they shift from soaking it all up to then playing with it. <laughs> they take all that information in and they start using it. They start applying it. Um, I mean, they're applying it, soaking in and applying at the same time as they're growing, but there's a cognitive shift. And when they hit that cognitive shift, there's not as much stuff that's being poured in in the same way. And they hit, you know, 
a point as preteens, teenagers, where there's not so much parenting anymore going on. Your job as a parent is then to keep them alive till their brain starts growing, <laughs> stops growing. And when their brain stops growing at 25, 26 years old, then, then you've done your job. Because at that point, cognitively, they are at a place where they can really start digging in and using all of the things that they've learned and they have their brains have stopped that process of growing so that they can start really living. And, and maybe I'm saying it badly, but I don't look at parenting as a 2018, 25 year job. I look at parenting as a six, seven, eight year job in the sense that that's where the key pieces that you've got to be really careful to make sure get in there, get in there because the rest of it is them playing around with it and figuring out all the barriers and boundaries that they can break and explore and stretch. And then you're trying to keep them alive as they go through all the hormonal fluctuations and stuff that get them into those mid twenties to then live. And then they're adults and they're their own people and you're no longer a parent. You're just another adult. <laughs> and I've always, I, I, I think it was somewhere at the point where Thor, I think it was probably one of my early childhood classes. One of my first semesters, I was in college in the teaching college. And I remember reading about how the brain grows and neuroscience and this is 26 year old neuroscience i'm sure it's all you know i'm sure there's more to it and i haven't kept up on it but i did for quite some time when i was teaching school and the more and more that they've done research and the more and more that they've learned about how children's brains grow and how their bodies grow we need to learn to parent and nourish our children in the way that Universal Mother does. And she takes into consideration each and every person's individual journey. And she respects each person's choice. If I wanna to choose to isolate, then the universe respects that to a certain degree and still pushes, still helps you grow. Anyway. Mother energy, universal mother energy is a powerful force in how we grow as spiritual beings. And I've been on this spiritual path since I was a teenager. It has been a part of who I am my whole life. I don't remember a time where I didn't feel connected universally, where I didn't know and feel and was aware of things that everybody around me seemed completely oblivious to, except maybe grandma. Papa was pretty aware of stuff. He never really shut it down. He just questioned where I was going with it. And he helped, helped me ask better questions so that I could get better answers and answers that made sense and were applicable where I wasn't just pinging off the walls with curiosity. It was directional. Papa was really good about that. Um, I don't know what his natural number is, but I, I have real suspicions that he's a nine. <sighs> um, and if he's not, then cool too. Um, anyway, I've had a lot of interesting conversations lately with people about family influences and what you took from that and how you changed it and made it better for yourself or for your children or for other people's children. And right or wrong, some of the ways that families have been doing things for generations aren't right. Mostly post-industrial revolution, there's been a lot of war and there's been a lot of trauma, PTSD, alcoholism, drug abuse in generations of families. It doesn't mean it wasn't there before then, but it's definitely more profound now and it's more 
invasive and we we as a culture and as a people need to shift so that we're not perpetuating these cycles of behavior under the guise of modern capitalistic society that your status and your accomplishments in life are not money, wealth, and a big suburban house. We've got to rethink these things. And Universal Mother is pushing these conversations forward with people and helping people think about it because it's important or we're not going to be able to sustain this. The planet is only so big. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all have a beautiful day and I will see you in prayer. Blessed be.